It's been a while. Welcome to Tea Time. I have been very busy. I've been releasing some revamps of the Bronze Science stuff, but other than that, there hasn't been a lot going on because I stopped doing my Final Fantasy X run through and that's because I got a job. I am employed. Ha! I get health benefits and a salary and stuff. I get to eat food, the kind that I want to eat. It's amazing. Today is a good day. I mean, it's been really great. I'm living in Los Angeles, working for Machinima for a show called Inside Esports. You can check out on Go90. I believe it's just go90.com. There's also an app, etc., etc. But uh, it's a show that I do with Axel Toss and a couple of other esports people from other scenes, CSGO with fighting game community, things like that. And we just talk about what's going on in esports. We do stories on StarCraft players and League of Legends players alike, all of esports, really cool. So that's my job now. The question is, what does that mean for Jack Attack TV? Well, it just means hopefully we'll get more traffic because more audience and things like that. And secondly, it means that I don't have a whole lot of time to do videos. So I have to be efficient with the videos that I do and I have to really prioritize which videos I'm going to do and uh, think about them and sort of take the time to do a particular video. Um, my long-term plan, because I don't want to live in LA forever, is that I'd like to eventually either work from home in Rhode Island for Machinima, or just, you know, finally, you know, get to that YouTube point where I can sustain myself, even if it isn't a ton of money, if it's enough, then I would just rather be doing that, the freedom that comes with, and I mean, it was just really great, but who knows, right? Uh, every plan is a tiny prayer to Father Time. And, uh, you know, I'm not really too attached to my plans, but that's the current one in case you were wondering. Uh, some people were asking in the comments, so I wanted to respond, but let's get to the changes. Speaking of efficiency, I can do this live. I used to do this entire section of me scrolling up and down. I used to do that in post with keyframes. Do you know how tedious that is? It's ridiculous. I don't know why I wasn't doing this like from day one. I have, I even have, you can't see it because it's not part of the screen capture, but I even have an app that I don't need anymore that, that allows me to take giant screenshots of an entire web page so that I could edit this in post when I could just have done it live. Like, oh my God. Anyway, the changes. This is the change list that we got when we went to the summit. So the public information is not too far behind the Blizzard information. The summit was, I don't know, like a month-ish ago, I want to say. Uh, so this stuff is coming out from the summit. There was some other summit stuff that came out. Uh, someone had asked me, oh, I remember the name and the name is gone. I'm so sorry. Someone did ask me on Twitter that, you know, if I could say certain things, what percentage of the things presented differences from the summit to what was presented to the public. And uh, that's going to be outside my NDA, so we're not going to do that. I'm pretty sure, and this isn't, don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure all the changes are in. All the ones that I was excited about got in, so that's kind of, I don't know, maybe I was being selfish in my memory. My memory remembers what I want it to remember, the things that I want. Terran, the Cyclone. So this is a really interesting idea, kind of harken, harkens back to the, the Brood War mech of the Vulture being this mobile unit, and now I think that's going to be replaced by... What we had for a while in the very beginning of Legacy of the Void, which is, uh, I called it Fast Mech. Zizzla and I called it Fast Mech. I stole that term from him. Zizzla, you're a boss. Um, but anyways, it's made up of Hellions and Cyclones. The Cyclones kind of take care of the armored stuff. Hellions take care of the light stuff. And you can have a mobile force while you're expanding, etc. So this is kind of, uh, I think, feeding into that in an intentional way, which I think is really cool. I, I like that lock-on is no longer this weird to control auto cast thing. Maybe it's not weird for you. Uh, maybe Terran players, you know, better than I just kind of, you know, figured it out and got it. But I was never comfortable with the lock-on. Microing that was always weird for me. Having it have a regular attack and then a non-auto cast spell, I like a lot. Um, and it's removed auto cast from a lock-on ability. So that's, that's specific, right? We're not talking about lock-on being 
uh, just turned off by default, but you can turn it back on. You cannot auto cast this ability. You have to manually cast it, which uh, personally I prefer. And then, you know, you just give them a weapon. I was really hoping to get them some moving shots some like gliding type stuff, but I guess I guess that doesn't make too much sense with the with the design. Anyways, one of my favorite parts. Oh my God, this is so good. One of my absolute favorite parts of this is this. Oh my God, I've been saying this forever. If you've been watching Tea Times or hanging out with me, I've been saying forever, please give us the siege tank that does stupid amounts of damage, stupid amounts of damage, but can totally wreck stuff and control space. Just really, really high amounts of damage. And I think they're coming through here. It's 35 plus 15 was the old one. 40 plus 30 is the new one. So 70 damage against armored targets, which is great. And something that we didn't get to yet, but it's going to make sense later. The reason why, in my opinion, this is 40 to light is because Banelings will now be 40 hit points instead of 35. Banelings are 35, right? Or are they 40 or 30? Or 30 or 35. Anyway, they're getting a health buff. And I think that that's great. To me, it was always more interesting to watch split micro than it was to watch focus fire micro. And I think that this change just kind of moves things in that area. But went off went off on a tangent there for a sec to talk about Zerg. Uh, but any, anyways, they get tons of damage, but they can't get picked up by siege tanks. And this uh, by Metavex. This is the core part to me of what a siege tank is. It's about the identity of the unit and making it immobile and very strong instead of mediocre and mediocre mobility, I think is awesome. And there are some allusions to Widow Mines and tanks differentiating them. Okay, I'm okay with that. Sounds great. Uh, and the Liberator Thor thing. To me, the Thor is just huge, right? That's the problem with the Thor. The Thor being gigantic is annoying and clunky and feels crappy. That's why I don't like to build Thors, but we'll see. Um, this is an interesting move. So making the Thor back into the versus light. Um, so going back to splash damage idea for javelin missiles, the really significance of 0.5 to 0.6 radius is sh actually shown here perfectly well. Except they have no health bars. What? Oh, there it is. There's the splash radius one. All right. So with 0.5 regularly separated mutilisks will not get any splash damage on them that's up here but with the 0.6 they do get splash damage. you can see this one right here it does get the splash damage and up top it only can hit one at a time so that's really significant it is it's funny how so many changes revolve around the mutilisk right the spore crawler buff to biological you know what i mean that's so wild any case pretty cool idea i don't really have any strong opinions on how this is going to work out but i like making units feel unique. And I think that that will probably accomplish this. Banshee is interesting. Hyperflight rotors. <laughs> cool, pretty cool. No more fusion core requirements. So you get a tech lab and you can get speed. This is actually interesting because uh, now speed and cloak are on the same tech level. So it'll be, do you want to get cloak or do you want to get speed? which is, I think, kind of cool. Um, that's sort of interesting to me. because I feel like maybe the better players will be picking speed and just abusing the mobility and not need the clo cloak. Maybe that'll happen. That could be interesting. This is really weird. I was like, I was happy for this one, the Viking one. I this was cool. OK, so the with the Viking, what they're what they're going for here is to make them not useless on the ground. The weird thing is, it's not a flat bonus. It's a bonus to mechanical. So probes and SEVs are mechanical, but drones are not, if I'm remembering that correctly. So you can use Vikings to harass workers really well, but only when you're going against particular races. And I think that they're not looking at that, right? This Notice how they're showing a, a battle of stalkers and Vikings. That's not, I think, the purpose, but I think it will be one of the unintended consequences 
Um, not that it will necessarily become popular or meta or anything like that, but I'm curious as to the results. Look at the little little bullets over there. Look at that. Look at that. The bullets come out and they just pile there. They eventually just, you know, disintegrate into the earth like all bullets do. But in any case, Cattle Bruiser. This is this is cool. I think the tactical jump ability of the Battle Cruiser is probably one of the least most underused. Yeah, one of the most underused uh, abilities in the game. And there are lots of good reasons for that, but I'd like to see it. I'd really like to see it uh, start to get explored, which is super interesting. Uh, going to cooldowns, great. This also has the other consequence of not being able to feed back battle cruisers anymore, which is a nice little buff to the uh, sort of survivability of the battle cruiser, which is cool. And. Auto turrets that do more damage for less time. And this is a bit weird for me because they're saying they want to increase the strength of Ravens in battles. And Terran already has so many worker harassment options. I feel like giving this a buff, a damage buff, is still going to... I mean, 16 to 24 is significant. It changed the number of hits it takes to kill a worker. So I feel like there's, they could still be used for that just as well. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Not not too consequential. Getting over to Protoss. Tempest. Oh, the Death Ball. The Death Ball. So when we were at the summit, they called this ability the Death Ball. And I'll show you the Death Ball. Where is it? There it is. It's a Disruption Sphere. Why does the Tempest have a Disruption Sphere? A Templar has Storm, and a Disruptor has a Purification Nova. Think about that for a second. Aren't those abilities like Purification? That sounds like Templar. Disruption, that sounds like Disruptor. Storm, that sounds like Tempest. Why are they mismatched? It's making me go crazy. I just realized that just now. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, cool. Let's let's go back. The Death Ball's awesome. Making it less massable is interesting. And we'll change the face of 4v4s forever. But seriously. Um, and they're making it better anti-air than anti-ground, which is cool. Which is cool. I don't... The one thing that I'm worried about here, right? So this whole change with the Tempest is really, really focused in on a particular thing, right? It's really specific change. It's focused on the Tempest interacting with the Siege Tank. Which, I mean, you're buffing the Siege Tank, it's probably going to come up a lot more. Uh, the idea is, I guess, to make Terran versus Paras a more mech favored. You know, you can play bio, but people tend to play mech kind of a thing. Uh, David Kim, I think, alluded to something similar to that in his uh, in his announcement today, which was really cool. Today? Yesterday? Today? Man, time, time is weird. Time is weird. Um, but in any case, very cool stuff over here with the disruption sphere. And we'll see how it ends up working out. I'm a little bit skeptical. I think that blasting mineral lines with this would be a lot of fun. Uh, the Zealot is going to get upgraded. This is this is becoming one of those like bunker build time changes where it's just like all the time we're considering. Do we do we buff the movement speed when there, or do we do we not do? Uh, it's a bit tricky. I think 4.13 is the speed of a stalker, so that sounds like the same change we've gone back and forth on for quite some time. Uh, and I'm cool with it. Sounds great. I think the Zealots definitely need help in the late game, especially against Crackling, so anything that would help them. That was, sounds cool. The carrier release interceptors. I've been really hoping that we'd get rid of this, and this is really cool for me. This is actually a cool moment that I want to highlight. This is Blizzard implementing something. And then having the the humility and the sort of self-awareness to be like, okay, I think we may have made a mistake here. Let's let's make sure we explore everything, explore it. And it's like, you know what? We made a mistake. We're going to revert an idea. We had an idea, we put it in the game, it didn't work out, and we're taking it out. And I think that hasn't happened very often. So I think this is pretty significant. Uh, sort of little flag marker that Blizzard is moving in the direction of sort of you know being more open to to changing things and not saying oh 
We're really attached to this unit that we built. I'm on the ship core. And it's awful, but we'll get rid of it. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> the Mothership Core joke, the Mothership Core must die, cast it into fire joke. Uh, it's, you know, just going to live on as a meme, but it's never going to happen, in my opinion. They won't do it. But Carrier, however, they might actually make this uh, buildable. I think the main reason Carriers aren't built so much it has to do with the build time. It's not really about the abilities or how much it costs for to do Interceptors. It's about the build time. Uh, we, there was, it was nerfed, you know, it was buffed. It went back and forth quite a bit. And whenever it was a short build time, people could build carriers. It was a reasonable tech choice to go. But with the build time as it is, I think we're still maintaining this gap. Like even back in the days of genius, when genius tried to build carriers, right? There's this gap of time where transitioning to carriers is like brutal because building your first four carriers takes forever because they build forever unless you're so rich you can afford four starport carrier which is like okay how many bases do you need for that like how far do you have to get in the game for that to happen and in any case i think it's the build time that matters the fact that they're removing release interceptor makes the makes it a lot more interesting makes uh unit interaction a lot more interesting one thing that i would change about the carrier or let's say not say change let's say uh, augment is in brood war they used to have trailing interceptors, so the carrier would be flying around and it would attack something. The interceptors would go, they would do like, oh my god, we're killing shit. And then the carrier is over here moving around. Now, when the interceptors are done killing shit, they just follow behind like little ducks behind the uh, behind the carrier and then it flies around and the little duckling interceptors follow it. But they don't go into the carrier, they don't make the carrier re-release unless the carrier stops. So. High level players would keep the carriers moving and they'd be basically juggling those units around, sending the interceptors to different areas, retargeting, all while keeping the carrier moving so that the interceptors don't stop and, and come back home. And I think that would be really cool. Obviously, the little ducks in a row was like a, a glitch, you know, That's not, it wasn't intended. It would be really cool if it was just like, if you kept your carrier moving and you weren't attacking anything, there's like a swarm of interceptors that are like surrounding the carrier, right? And the carrier is moving around. The attack comes in, they just, whoosh, they all just go out, you know? Anyway, anyway, idea, little idea that I had. Let me know if you like it. Uh, David Kim, if you like it, you know, maybe consider it. I don't know. Give it a shot. Dark Templar. <laughs> this was the highlight. <laughs> this was uh, the cause of memes. Oh man. So at the summit, when they announced this to us, they did it, they did it really intelligently. Um, I think it was Chris Sigety doing the, the introduction, right? So he was doing the mic check before the introduction even came. And and he, he made a made a joke like just like and uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, DTs now have blink and everybody laughs and like, oh, you know, look at that Chris Sigety making a joke. And then later on in the multiplayer section, David Kim says that DTs have blink. <clears throat> oh man, I love this. Uh, this is a sign to me that Blizzard is really open to exploring crazy changes and um, you know, not afraid of, of the backlash as much, I think, as they were before. That's good. I think that to create the best game, the people creating have to have a lot of freedom. They have to just be able to explore ideas. And if they don't work out, you know, fine, whatever. We'll get some new ideas. And uh, let's talk about this thing. It teleports. It's called Shadow Stride. It's basically blink. Same cost. Research time is long. And it actually builds from the, the Dark Shrine. So it's an upgrade at the Dark Shrine. Dark Shrines now need to have power. And the creates a visible smoke effect is really cool. So let's take a look at that. Really cool. So they're coming here. Kill some workers and shoof, get out of there. I think it's really cool that they create that smoke because then it's sort of like, okay, you know where the Dark Templar is. You just can't see it. It sort of gives away their position. Uh, just like, I mean, it's a pretty simple concept, similar to having tracer bullets and um, first person shooters and things like that. So very cool, very insane. I think it might be one of those things where if everything's OP, nothing's OP. And obviously adjustments will have to be made, but you know, really excited to, to build these <laughs> and to attempt to learn how to defend against them as well. 
And the Zerg. Okay, so let's check this out. Swarm host, not super interested in. They're going to try to get people to build the swarm host by making it cheaper. And they're going to increase locust swoop range from four to six. I mean, maybe that'll help. I think one of the problems with locusts is that, you know, they get killed before they land. They can't do any damage. A lot of times the ground locusts would have even been better, but now they're always flying locusts, right? So there's that. Or are they? You can tell I don't build any swarm hosts. I don't think, I think I've had four or five swarm host games ever. I just, I never really enjoyed the unit too much. Not that I disagree with it from a design perspective, but I was just never like, I'm going to build a swarm host. There was no, no part of me that really wanted to do that. All right. So Ravager, Ravager is interesting. Um, Ravager is already kind of a glass cannon, right? It's a, it's a big unit, but low HP. And now it's going to get the armored flag. So it's going to move into this more, even more glass cannony area. I wouldn't mind if maybe they got some extra range with that to ensure that they'd stay in the back line being uh, super weak. But speaking of range, this is my favorite change. Ah, second favorite change. This is my favorite little change. The tank is my favorite change. I think the tank change is going to change everything. That's the biggest, most beautiful change in this entire list. But this Hydralisk one is kind of special to me. Uh, and that is because I have been so annoyed for so long that the Hydralisk interacts with the creep differently than every other ground unit. Okay, the drone floats, whatever, let's, okay, he's a drone, we're used to that. But the Hydralisk is just like a roach, but for some reason, once you upgrade the speed, the creep doesn't really benefit the Hydralisk like it benefits the roach and all of these other units. And now it will! So, we're gonna get plus one range right off the bat, and then Muscular Augments is going to be plus one range. That's right, seven range Hydralisks. Yes. For context, the unit that launches Mortar Rounds is six range. That's kind of crazy. Obviously, the Mortar Rounds are nine range, but when they attack, they end up in that area. Anyway, the point is, this is awesome. So they're going to be faster, and they're going to have more range. And I think... That's how you do the Hydralisk. I think if you try to make the Hydralisk more survivable uh, so that it's stronger and more of a core unit, then you know, you're gonna run into, it's just really roach that can shoot up. Why would I ever build roaches? So it, kind of maintaining, maintaining the, the advantages of both the roach and the Hydra, I think is really cool. Uh, some people were talking about doing things like switching it to tier one, lowering the supply cost, you know, making it a tier one unit or a tier 1.5 unit, right? And then putting the roach up into the layer tech or not, right? Or not. Uh, that would be my dream. I would love to have a tier one Hydralisk back. That would be amazing. A one supply Hydralisk. That's not super strong, super crazy. It's just a nice core unit. It can hit air. The whole anti-air thing doesn't have to be solved with queens. You can do it with Hydras. Uh, I think really where Hydras are in the tech is what I'd like to see changed, but I'm just really happy to, for Hydras to get a buff, one of my favorite units, uh, the, them and Lurkers. So, okay, cool. Awesome. Banelings. Let's talk. Oh, oh yes. Let's watch this. Let's watch. It is 30 HP. Okay, cool. Excellent. Beautiful. So this is the thing that I was talking about earlier, kind of got on a little bit of a tangent. Basically, it's... Focusing down the banelings isn't going to work as well anymore, but splitting is still going to be great. Uh, splitting is almost going to be better now because, you know, the the stronger 40 hit point uh, baneling is going to be harder to focus down. So I think we're going to see less targeting and more splitting, which is cool for me because I love watching. I mean, who doesn't love watching marine baneling splits? Maybe playing it could be kind of hectic, but it's really, really fun to watch. Very exciting. And it's a place where both players can really show their skill by target firing and things like that. So moving in that direction is great. Making one of the, the coolest micro in StarCraft 2 even cooler. I like that. I am drinking iced tea, by the way. I don't know if you can tell by the, the face, but I am sweating. It is so hot in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is just a hot place. I understand like all those day night episodes where he just started talking about how hot it was because it is hot. I'm indoors and it's hot. I need to buy like two more air conditioners or something. The Infestor. The Infestor deserves some love. Cool. The <laughs> yeah, so the Infestor is crazy, right? 
Everyone gets a crazy change, right? The tank becomes ridiculous. The DT becomes ridiculous. And for Zerg, I think the Infester becomes ridiculous. Deep Tunnel, you can go anywhere you want as long as you have vision. So effectively, Infestors are Nidus Worms themselves. They can like Nidus places. Like, what the hell? That's crazy. That's absolutely, they can just, wow. That's like, and I saw it. 50 mana cost too, or I don't like to get caught up in the details because it's like, obviously they're gonna mess with the details. It's the concepts that are supposed to be being looked at right now. And uh, it feels broken to me. I don't think it'll work, but I'm so, so excited to give it a try and to see how it works out and what it feels like to play, feels like to play against and uh, things like that. It's really exciting. So that is the last thing that the Broodlord, because they want to make the Broodlord not so OP, so they un OP'd it by one range. Broodlords are still going to be great. Um, maybe they'll have fun interaction with the Thor. Not 100% sure. We'll see. We'll see what that's all about. But in any case, I think that that wraps it up for today's edition of Tea Time. Thank you for tuning in, hanging out, etc. My name is Jack Attack, and as always, thanks for watching. If you have an idea for a video you would like me to do, please leave with any questions, comments, criticisms, concerns, or anything beginning with letter C in the comment section below, and I'll see you again soon.